Welcome to Take Another Look, Your Eye on the Arts in Albuquerque. I'm your host, Tony Dallaflora. Mention New Mexico and visual arts in the same sentence, and for most people, that conjures images of Santa Fe and Taos and their famed art colonies and galleries. But in its unassuming way, starting after World War II, Albuquerque began asserting itself as a player on the visual arts scene, and it hasn't stopped since. Although it has never become the art market that Santa Fe has or the romantic destination for artists like Taos, it is, as Huffington Post art critic Peter Frank noted, New Mexico's new artistic heart. To recognize and celebrate the art community in the Duke City, a number of private and public organizations have come together to create On the Map, Unfolding Albuquerque Art and Design. The first of On the Map's numerous events and exhibitions kick off next January and run through June. With me today to talk about the un this huge undertaking are Sherry Brueggemann, manager for the City of Albuquerque's Public Art Program, Suzanne Sabarge, director of 516 Arts, and Andrew Connors, curator of art at the Albuquerque Museum. Thank you guys for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, Thank you I hope we can fit everything we have to talk about in this <laughs> half hour show. Probably not, but we'll get through as much as we can. But before we talk about the programming, I, I want to, you know, uh, for the viewers who either may not be into the art scene here or who are, but maybe not too deeply, why, uh, let's talk about the history of art in Albuquerque. Why is Albuquerque now being recognized as the, the artistic heart of, of New Mexico? Well, I just think that there is such a longevity of creativity that's gone on in this community. And um, Albuquerque, long before it was called Albuquerque, was a crossroads of people where people met, uh, where people passed through. And so some of the earliest human-made objects that have been found in North America have been found also in this region, uh, the Clovis Points and the Folsom Points. Mm -hmm. And as the curator of one of the exhibitions, Joe Trogett, mentions, that those objects, those points that were used for hunting game, were really aestheticized objects. They were objects that were made more attractive than they needed to be to be purely functional. And then we go through the Petroglyph National Monument, I mean, a national monument dedicated to art, which is kind of wonderful. And um, through the Spanish colonial period, we're surrounded by Pueblos that have created some of the best of uh, Pueblo tradition in jewelry making and ceramics. Um, and then through the Spanish colonial period and up to the present, where there's just this great vitality. And in your intro, you talked about us not necessarily being an art market, but right. more intriguingly, we are a place where art is made. And I think that that makes it much more of a dynamic uh, place to be because the artists live here. The artists stay here. The artists want to be in right. this environment. Yeah. And that's part of what we're celebrating with these projects. Yeah. Well, who are, some, who are some of the artists that we typically associate with Albuquerque? Um, well, I think in terms of contemporary art, and uh, Suzanne and Cherry can certainly uh, talk to this better, uh, but in terms of contemporary art, we have some of the most internationally renowned photographers work working right in our midst. Um, I think of in particular Patrick Nagatani and Joel Peter Witkin and Betty Hahn, Tom Barrow. Uh, we've really got some great things that are going on right here. And um, then there were major painters. Um, Frederick Hammersley certainly is, is one of the right. great painters in the United States tradition. And there were artists who chose on purpose to be here in Albuquerque right. and seem to right. love it. And other people, uh, Raymond Johnson, for instance, yeah. is probably a name that is probably one of the first names that comes to mind when people think about art here in Albuquerque. Um, People, Carl von Hassler, of course, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the the dean of the Albuquerque Art Colony or something, as it was as he was dubbed back uh, in the early 20s. Um, but and, and there was quite a renaissance in, in Albuquerque in the 50s. But that that's continued to today. I mean, who are some of the the contemporary artists now that are making a name for themselves, Suzanne? Gosh, um, there's so many, as well as architects. Our show at 516 Arts is going to be really focusing on architects and designers, but Antoine Predock comes to mind, and Bart Prince in the mm. architecture world, and visual artists. Well, I would, I would think that there's so many artists working in such a variety of different, um, in different media. Uh, so that we have designers, as Suzanne was mentioning, but we also have uh, digital artists and film artists, uh, film production. It's true. Uh, that, 
The di in the digital world, it's Albuquerque has really been taking a lead, and Andrea Poli, who's a oh, professor at the yeah. University of New Mexico, she's a very well-known artist in the world of electronic art in particular. Well, I'll chime in here real quick. We've, you know, artists that have made a huge contribution to the public art world. Um, artists like Betty Sabo, who work in paint as well as bronze, you know, Wilson Hurley, um, people who have really been champions for the public art world. We also have a very strong, strong tradition of muralists here in our community. Right. Um, Francis Rivera, um, you know, Francisco Lefebvre, lots of artists that have really been um, championing that art form as well. Yeah. One, um one of the questions, I think, is about how, how does Albuquerque's art, we started talking about it before, but how does Albuquerque's art scene differ from Santa Fe and Taos? What is it about Albuquerque that has attracted artists, and how is, it, how is it a different place to work than those places? Well, I think one of, the, one of the real differences is that there's never been a typical Albuquerque thing. Mm -hmm. um, Al Albuquerque's identity has been constantly shifting and changing through time, depending on who was living and working here. And in Taos and Santa Fe, there's always that tradition beginning in the late 19th century of this is the Taos style. This is what Taos artists make. Uh, certainly there was a great renova um, renovation of that idea in the 1950s when Taos became a center for abstract painting. But um, we've never had anything codified as a Albuquerque style, like there's the Santa right. Fe style. And um, our architecture doesn't all have to be out of Adobe. Our architecture is all sorts of things. So we have architects here that are creating buildings that are avant-garde any place in the world. And they're here in Albuquerque because nobody said, that's not what we do here. And yeah. because of that uh, permissiveness, I think that artists have really been pushing in dynamic directions uh, that keep all of us on our toes. Yeah, I think that's them. part of the reason it's so appealing for artists to live here because there's that sense of freedom that, the, that artists can really explore here and express themselves. You can be a little bit more experimental here, too. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. just going to say, I think the influence of science and technology in this community has also had a lot of influence on the type of art that gets made here, too. Um, there's a lot of um, public art that has tried to embody this idea of science, blending science and technology with art as well. Yeah, okay. And w it seems like we've been um, maybe more reflective of the diversity here in Albuquerque. It seems like this is where maybe women's voices, women's art, got a little head start on the rest of the state to an extent. I mean, there were obviously famous women artists in other places, but, um, and, and the Hispanic culture and the Indian culture, they were sort of, is it fair to say they were more able to flourish, flourish here in Albuquerque than maybe other parts of the state, or? Well, I, I don't know. The wonderful thing about Albuquerque art is that everybody's in the mix together, mm -hmm. and has been from the very beginning, so that there really has not been this challenge of Hispanic artists have one weekend in August, and Native Americans have another weekend in August. Um, you know, nobody has a weekend, so it means that everybody's <laughs> got their opportunity uh, to be the artist that they want to be from the very beginning. I mean, a great example is an artist named Mimi Murphy who moved here in the 1930s from Dallas, Texas. And she lived a fairly untraditional lifestyle in Texas, and she was not really welcome. And mm. she moved to Albuquerque with her partner and lived very happily and created very dynamic avant-garde uh, sculptures here yeah. in Albuquerque that sold mostly in Texas and the rest of the country, but she lived here. She loved uh, feeling comfortable here. Yeah. The same is true with Agnes Martin, an artist that's so associated with Taos. She got her start and built her first adobe home here in Albuquerque in the South Valley. So she really felt that this was a place where she could be herself. Yeah, great. Well, let's get to the program on the map. And, and um, I know you don't like to take too much credit for it, but tell us how, how it got started. What was the inspiration for, for bringing all this programming together? Well, one of the great things about the art community, um, and I have to give Suzanne so much credit for this, because Suzanne really taught us to collaborate uh, with the land arts program, with Isaiah, with the street arts programming mm -hmm. that they've done at 516, uh, she really brought the community together and um, made us realize we can work on one thing. And by pooling our resources, we can make a huge project uh, by a number of smaller organizations. And so uh, we just wanted to build on that idea. And um, I've always felt that Albuquerque never gets the attention that it deserves.
reserves. I mean, when you look at the stack of books on Taos and Santa Fe art uh, traditions right. and yeah. art right. heritage, there's a huge stack and there's nothing from Albuquerque. There have been a few small exhibition catalogs. So I really felt, for one thing, we need a good book. Uh, we need the first book. Uh, it doesn't have to be the definitive book, and that's being written by Joe Trogett right. as part of a companion to our exhibition at the Albuquerque Museum. But the programming that 516 Arts does and the, program, uh, the programming that the public art program does, the Indian Public Cultural Center, the National Hispanic Cultural Center, the University Art Museum, Richard mm -hmm. Levy Gallery, uh, the Harwood, um, all of these organizations have done great things and so we just thought if we do it all at the same time it really becomes a celebration of who we are and what we do as a community yeah Suzanne you do seem to have a knack for that <laughs> well um, thank you <laughs> <laughs> I mean was, was it a matter of just calling up people and say hey do you want to be a part you of this know, it's been an intuitive process I didn't set mm -hmm. out with a goal we're gonna work together I really <laughs> it's really been organic because the arts community is made up of a lot of artists and organizers who um, our friends and collaborators and so it's been a fairly natural process where people have brainstormed and come up with ideas together and um, it's really evolved naturally I've just been sort of the one to help package things and push it forward but all of the content and the collaboration has really come from a group effort Great. Well, let's talk about the, the, the exhibit you mentioned. The, it's kind of the, I guess, the anchor exhibit for this whole thing called Visualizing Albuquerque that's going to be at the museum for three, three to four months, I think. Yep. Tell me uh, about that. Well, um, luckily, we get to um, bring some retirees back into the fold. And uh, Joe Trogett from the New Mexico Museum of Art retired last summer. And so we poached him and said, can you tell us the story about who we are? Um, or at least his version of the story. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so Joe is basically doing an exhibition that we sort of jokingly call 14,000 Years of Art in Albuquerque, <laughs> and, um, which is a small topic. Um, right. But he's, he's really been able to tell wonderful, dynamic, quirky stories that build together to really uh, show the diversity of our, of our heritage in this yeah. region. So it's really the middle Rio Grande region. It's not just the city of Albuquerque. So okay. it basically stretches from uh, the base of Lava Hata Hill in the north um, down to the Trinity site, basically, in the okay. south, and out to Laguna and Acoma in the west and to the East Mountains in the okay. east. About how many pieces are going to be in this exhibition? Uh, we don't know. Uh, oh, the exhibition okay. keeps growing. Uh, <laughs> okay. In the book, there are about 140 objects that have been reproduced. Wow. Uh, so okay. it's just a really sort of skimming the surface of what's there. Um, but we're going to be doing a variety of other shows at the uh, Albuquerque Museum, in particular a, a show that the public art programs are doing. And uh, Sherry and Nan have done a great job of sort of thinking about how can we present the public aspect of our art world to right. the public in an exhibition. Right. So we're gonna, there are lots of these other stories that are going to be told. Yeah. Uh, we will we'll get to public art in, in um in a second here. Sure. We're going to get to cover that. Um, that that's going to open January 31st, and the same day you've got an exhibit opening at 516. Right? Yes, we do. It's called From the Ground Up, Design Here and Now, and it really focuses on architecture and design um, since the year 2000. It's really current. what's currently happening mm -hmm. in Albuquerque and right. is curated by a terrific group of architects and curators, Viviette Hunt, Katya Crawford, um, Mira Woodson, and Kristen Shaw are bringing that show together. They're taking some very creative approaches with how they're exhibiting the work. Um, yeah. One of the things they're doing is creating a design wall. On 516 Arts has a 25-foot high wall in our entrance. It's a very right. unique and dramatic right. wall. Yes. And they're doing a floor-to-ceiling installation that includes a wide array of artists' work. Um, there's going to be a, a giraffe cabinet by Emmy Ozawa and felted baskets by Danielle Ray, Ray Miller, Kenji Kondo's laser cut uh, glass vases, and Richard Levy's hooked rug depicting the Isotopes baseball park will all be part of this <laughs> massive floor to ceiling installation. Rich, so Richard's it's going to be a lot of fun. His own show yeah. Here at some point, but yeah. And then they're doing a project called the White Box installation where they 
we are, as, as the curators, they've developed this concept to create white boxes that the viewer can look into and see images, and look in through a little hole. Oh, okay. So there will be boxes of all different sizes hanging from the ceiling, and each one will have an image of an architect's work. Uh, some of them real projects, oh, and some okay. of them um, speculative, imagined right, projects. Yeah. And so that will show a really wide variety of current architecture projects being made in Albuquerque by both the established big names and a lot of um, emerging architects as well. Yeah. And you're going to have even, I noticed, furniture? Yes. Stuff like that? Yes. It's a, a lot of the show is about functional objects that can be used and worn and used in everyday life. So. Um, we, there's there's many many artists in the show, but just to name a few, Virgil Ortiz, we're very excited to be mm -hmm. showing his work. He's a Native American artist from Cochiti de Pueblo, who's internationally known for his fashion and ceramics work, and um, we're very excited to to show his work. And then we'll have dresses made from graffiti canvas. Uh, the architect mm -hmm. Amanda Robinson is. Um, basically have bringing urban street art into the gallery and working with canvas that's been painted by graffiti artists and okay. um, uh, yeah we never have enough graffiti in this town <laughs> yeah I know um, but uh, it's another example of um, how we're looking at architect the art of architecture yeah. and creative projects that architects are doing not just buildings but also working right. in other art forms and then Beth Olson will be showing her sculptural lamp called Burn which is made from recycled uh, water bottles and LED lights okay. it's a very dramatic yeah. sculptural piece and uh, lots more and and you're, there's a satellite project associated with this. We're not completely disengaging. Yeah, Santa there's Fe. two we actually. Them play here yeah, we're inviting project. them to be part of it. And the Center for Contemporary Art in Santa Fe, Aaron Elder, the curator there, has been working with us. And mm. basically, our show from the ground up will have two satellites. One in Santa Fe that Aaron is hosting. It's a solo show of Nina Dubois' work, and she works with sculptural elements in domestic spaces, how we live, um, looking at the objects we live with and um, she'll have um, models of some of her work in the 516 show and then in Santa Fe people can go to CCA to experience a larger installation of one of those models um, yeah. created okay. in full and then also another satellite project in Albuquerque Central Features Gallery is a brand new gallery opening up downtown right around the corner from 516 Arts and Nancy Zastadel who's founded that gallery will be showing a, a pop-up satellite show of the work of architect Bruce Davis and okay. he's doing an installation an abstract installation about space and um, embracing the limitations of space okay okay um, Let's move on to public art. Sherry, as anybody who watches this show knows, public art has a, a long history here in Albuquerque, starting in the, officially starting in the late 70s. Obviously, we had uh, petroglyphs way before then. <laughs> but um, tell me about some of the events that are going to focus on the public art aspect of all this. Sure. Well, as Andrew mentioned, um, they invited us uh, to put on an exhibition in the museum. So we're mm -hmm. having a lot of fun with that whole idea of talking about public art, which is always outside the museum inside the museum. Right. We are collaborating with Bernalillo County um, and we're going to be showcasing public art throughout the region, the whole county area. Um, and we are going back a little further than the, the 35 years of when the official ordinance was set right. up. Um, there were some really great objects that were here in the public realm. And so we're probably going back about 60, 75 years oh, okay. to include some of those works of art too that um, we have now adopted into the program. Uh, we are mounting a very specific um, part of the exhibition about the history of murals in Albuquerque. We have an incredible intern who's working with us right now on researching that history of murals. Right. And we're going to be showcasing uh, sort of the ebb and flow of when murals have become popular and not so much. Um, and uh, when we. When they get painted <laughs> over. <laughs> exactly. We're going to tell some of those stories too. Um, we are also going to include a very sort of future looking aspect of the exhibition. Right now we have a call for ideas open that will result in um, hopefully a few really incredible ideas about large scale public art in the downtown core that we'll be able to put on display as part of the exhibition. Okay, great. Now there's something going on, um, part of, you also have something going on at the rail yards. 
Yes, we are hoping that You're we can <laughs> get all the details worked out to um, do a call for temporary art at the rail yards during the off months, during the you know uh, January, February, Mar March, when there's not as much competition for doing you know musical performances or you know farmers market. The farmers market kind of goes uh, dormant at that time. Yeah. Um, we're working right now on getting the approvals to actually do some temporary art installations at the okay. rail yards okay. as our sort of little satellite yeah, installation. Yeah, and if, if viewers, if you haven't been down to the rail yards yet, you got to get down and see it. It's it's a pretty amazing place. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And one other thing too, you were gonna, you're going to talk, you're going to have something around the, the monumental art project that we're trying to get off the ground here in Albuquerque? Yes, what we're doing right now is we have a, a ideas competition. We've actually put a call for artist ideas out to the community. It's actually open statewide. Any New Mexico artist could submit their idea for what would you imagine could be the very large monumental public art for sort of the downtown area. We, we left our boundaries pretty loose. It could go as far as Old Town, maybe even to the river, go as far south as the rail yards, sort of up to maybe, you know, Lomas or the interstate, and then, mm -hmm. you know, over to, um, uh, you know, Edith Broadway area. So right. where would people want to sort of designate uh, a place for a very large scale public artwork so artists are encouraged to identify the location and and, and an idea and yeah. uh, we'll put those uh, best ideas on display as part of the exhibition and it could eventually lead to a commission it could <laughs> we're, we're not sure it sort of depends on what what, what, shows, what shows up, up what right. kind of what kind of <laughs> ideas we get and whether they're feasible yeah okay <laughs> okay well, switch gears a little bit, um, Andrew. One of the one of the exhibits is going to be uh, from the permanent collection at the University of New Mexico Art Museum, and as as you as a as a historian of art here in town, you know that that um, the art department at UNM is probably the catalyst for almost everything that's happened in this community in terms of art. I mean, there's a lot of other things going on around it, but I think without that without the museum as a centerpiece for this. Um, probably a lot of the stuff wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have been in as vibrant a place. Is that a fair statement? Well, absolutely. The university has been really crucial. Um, but the university art programs really began to become dynamic and important um, long before the university art museum even opened. It's um, sort of difficult for us to remember that the university art museum just opened in the 60s. Um, right. And the Albuquerque Museum didn't open until the late 70s at its current site in the Antoine Predock building. So, um, you know, the, the idea of art in museums is a pretty new thing in Albuquerque. And so what a lot of the artists did at the university was just create pop-up spaces, you know, pop-up galleries that they would take over a lot of spaces downtown in the right. 1960s, mm -hmm. 70s, and into the 80s. Downtown was incredibly vibrant with gallery spaces and artist collective spaces. Right. Um, and a lot of those were fed by the university faculty or university students that decided to stick around after their, their school time. Um, but the university already in the 1950s was attracting artists of the caliber of Richard Diebenkorn, uh, excuse me, who um, came to the University of New Mexico to get his graduate degree. So Richard Diebenkorn was here, um, one of the most innovative painters of the 20th century. And uh, Richard Diebenkorn almost didn't get his degree because there were faculty members um, at the university that were still so, it has to be landscape, it has to be representative, it has to be based in the figure. Right. And Diebenkorn was doing abstraction. And finally, it was Raymond Johnson, another faculty member, that said, if you don't give the degree to Richard Diebenkorn, I quit. And Raymond Johnson was you know, the big name. And good on for that. Raymond because that would have been a huge it, black mark. <laughs> exactly. We probably wouldn't be celebrating Albuquerque today. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. even going before that, in 1934, when Los Poblanos opened up, the Sims family decided that they wanted to prov uh, provide a public space for the viewing of good art. And so they opened a gallery at Los Poblanos in 1934 yeah. right. and brought in works from Europe. I mean, major European artists as right. well as United States artists and locals were exhibiting there. So um, even though we, th we think that the university had everything there, um, it really was the rest of the community that was supporting these ideas that were going on at the, at the university. Yeah. And with the opening of the museum, then suddenly there was a locus, there was a, a mm -hmm. space. But the graduate students always had to show their work um, in whatever space they could, yeah. they could get around the city. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, 
I wish we had more time to talk about that. I want to get to a couple other subjects here before we close. But Suzanne, uh, and speaking of the art scene in the community here, you you were a director at Harwood Art Center, which is going to be hosting uh, one of the one of the exhibitions here. Tell me a little bit about where Harwood fits into the local art scene and, and what they're going to be doing here with their exhibition. Well, they're going to be celebrating their 25th anniversary soon, which is um, really wonderful to see. It started out as a very um, grassroots, it continues to be grassroots, but it started out as an idea, this funky old building, artists in there doing their thing, and it evolved to really be a major center for community arts and mm -hmm. people coming together with kids and families or, and emerging artists. Um, they have over 40 artist studios there as well as classes, a whole educational program. So they're going to, for On the Map, they're going to be celebrating 25 years of artists who have made a big impact on Harwood or who have also been impacted by Harwood mm -hmm. and that promises to be a terrific show and it's where I got my start doing mm -hmm. arts organizing in this community yeah. and the the director the Escuela del Sol Montessori owns the Harwood Art Center so the executive director of the whole shebang is Fried van Gils who's really given artists a lot of freedom of expression and that's I think that's the key that's what's made it flourish is that f that openness and her imagination and openness to art. Yeah, and it has been one, I mean, there's been lots of little co-ops and enclaves and studio uh, exhibition spaces, I mean, since the 30s, as you mentioned, cropping up, but this mm -hmm. has this has a little bit of longevity that I guess it does. Don't, yeah. other, don't have, yeah. Some of these projects that start as an experiment, it's very satisfying to see them grow. And, and 516 Arts in particular, we started it initially as a, potentially a two-year project, as an experiment. And now it's eight years later, and it's going strong. And yeah. So it's great to see things take hold. It is. It's great. Um, there's going to be a food component to this, not necessarily <laughs> that we get to eat, but uh, right. we, we have, we ha you have to have the Tamron Institute in as part of this thing. That's Absolutely. another landmark institution in this town. Tell me what's going on over there. So the, the public art program and Tamarin have partnered to produce a series of prints all around the theme of foodies, um, Albuquerque food in art. And um, we did a call for artists uh, back in the spring of this year and selected eight artists who are now working on their, their uh, lithography editions mm -hmm. at Tamarin. Um, and some of the uh, artworks include um, sort of architectural renderings, drawings of very famous food places like the Frontier Restaurant, okay. Um, okay. some of, you know, some of the other yeah. locations like, you know, um, the, I know I'm going to mess this up, the dog, you know, with the hot dog? The dog house. The dog the dog house. house yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the dog house restaurant is, in, is included in one sure. of those. Um, we've got some artists who are doing works on um, uh, kind of the agricultural bent yeah. of gardening and farming and harvesting food. And um, uh, Ann Cooper, uh, an artist that's been here in Albuquerque for a long time, is doing a whole series of prints just about seeds and how important seeds are in our, in our environment and how seeds have been carried yeah. from different places throughout New Mexico. So really fun, um, diverse set of imagery that's going to come out of this right. partnership with Public Art and Tamarin, one of, yeah, one of the best institutions that ever came to Albuquerque. And I hope they're going to have food trucks outside, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure she will when the <laughs> exhibition goes up later in the spring. Uh, yeah, definitely yeah. celebration of food. Well, we've got to wrap up here. Uh, we've just got a couple minutes left. But what uh, I wanted to ask you, Andrew, what do you think people, what, what do you hope people will take away from this celebration of this, of, of Albuquerque? Well, I hope first and foremost that our own community gets a greater appreciation mm -hmm. for what artists have contributed to the vitality of our space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because um, that's the thing that I think is, is one of our major hurdles, that a lot of people just don't understand how important the arts are and how wonderful this community is because of the creativity that artists have brought. That's something that in the cultural services department, you know, we've been wanting to do for, for many years to really make people aware of in our own backyard. So, right. you know, Augustine Romero at the South Broadway Cultural Center is doing a great exhibition um, showing some very well-known artists and some artists that we've never heard of before with the hope that 
all of us can learn from these projects. But we also hope that there's a little bit more of a national recognition for um, Albuquerque as an arts destination. And uh, that's something that we all think about all the time, uh, but often the rest of the country doesn't, you know, they use Albuquerque for the airport and, and move yeah, on up right, north. Right. And we're much more than an airport or an Apple store or yeah. the malls um, mm -hmm. or Costco, you know. Uh, we've got this great dynamic community and I hope that the rest of the country can really appreciate it and we can appreciate it better too. Right. right. I really love that this project spans history and contemporary art and it right. shows that unique mix that oftentimes people stereotype are area as just traditional, but it's really a mix of traditional and contemporary that make it so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. We've, I'm sorry, we've got to wrap it up. I want to thank Sherry Brueggemann, thank Suzanne you. Zabarge, Andrew Connors for joining us today on Take Another Look. Um, you can find everything you need to find out about this at abqonthemap.com. So I hope people will check frequently to see what's going on there. And thank you for joining us on Take Another Look. We'll see you next time.